heavy side step function actually uh, named after a guy heavy sides a guy that's why it's capital H it's a person so a heavy side step function this u of t minus a is a function that only has two values it's either 0 before a or it's 1 after a so it's 0 and then a switch at a happens and then it's 1 so the range of the function is only those two numbers it's either 0 or it's 1 the domain of the function well you can put any number into it any t value into it any input into it um, if you put numbers if the argument is negative in other words if t is less than the value a then the output is zero if t is greater than a the argument of the heavy side step function the t minus a part is positive then the output is one we we don't have it defined at the switch point of um, of a but it's zero and then it's a switch at one so if I asked for what's u of 7, oh, that's u of a positive, it's 1. What's u of minus 12, that's u of a negative, it's 0. So we've got this switch. Can I use it to switch on another function at the switch point A? Well, remember that that switch point, that u part, this part, is either 0 or 1. So if I had something like u of, let's say, t minus uh, 2, and I'm going to multiply it by another function. Let's multiply it by the function t squared. So for time before 2, this is 0 times t squared, so it's 0. For times after 2, it's 1 times t squared, so it's just t squared. So what does that look like? Here's our regular y equals t squared, it's a parabola. And I want to switch this parabola on at 2. So I want it to be 0 before. I want it to be 0 before, and then the parabola switched on. So that's going to be 0 times the parabola, 1 times the parabola. So now I've, this, this is the function then that gives me this graph, 0 and then the parabola switched on. If I want to switch on a different function, I just throw a different function in this square bracketed piece. All right, we can turn a function on. Can I turn a function off? Well, the thing is that the u, the step function, only ever gets turned on. So if I want to turn a function off, then I need to turn on the negative of that function. So for instance, here's my y equals x squared parabola. Say I want to turn it off at 1. So I want it to be t squared and then at t equal to 1, I will, afterwards I want to switch it to 0. So in this case, what I need to do <coughs> is I just have my regular t squared, but now I'm going to turn on I'm going to turn on the negative. So for times less than 1, this u is 0. So it's t squared minus 0 times t squared, or just t squared. So I get this parabola piece. For time after 1, for time after 1, the u part, this part, is 1. So it's t squared minus t squared, or 0. So the answer to our question is, can we turn another function off at a switch point? Yes. We just subtract. We add the negative. It's like destructive interference from physics. Now, the book will talk about the window function, which is a way to turn a function um, on and then turn it off. Uh, that's one way to think about it. 
I'm not going to get that complicated with it. I know how to turn a function on. I know how to func turn a function off. So say if I had the blue is arctan. So that's arctan. Say I wanted to turn arctan on at pi and off at, uh, that looks like 3 pi. So I want to turn it on at pi and off at 3 pi. So I'm trying to graph the red part here. So u of t minus pi, pi, where's pi? u of t minus pi, that, that for times before pi is 0, for times after pi is 1. So I'm going to turn on the arctan function. If I just left it like that, that would be red, turn on the arctan, and then it would go continuing on forever. But I want to shut it off. So I know I to shut it off, I really have to shut or I have to turn on the negative. So Now at 3 pi, this negative arctan turns on. So it's going to be arctan minus arctan. So there's kind of three zones in this picture. Before pi, both u's are 0. In between here, the first u is 1. The u of t minus pi is 1. And the u of t minus 3 pi is 0. After, both u's are 1. So let's take a look here. Before, this is 0 times arctan minus 0 times arctan, or just 0. So that's our before. In between here, in between pi and 3 pi, this first u of t minus pi is 1. So it's 1 times arctan minus 0 times arctan. So just arctan. And afterwards, over in this region, both u's are 1. So we get 1 times arctan minus 1 times arctan, or 0. So that's a way that I can turn a function on and turn a function off. This on and off is what they call the window function sometimes. So what does this allow us to do? Well, this allows us to express a split function, like this one, in terms of a single function. So we have the t. I don't have to turn the t function on. In Laplace transforms, we always consider that time starts at 0. So I, I'm, I'm not turning that function on. It's just on when the clock turns on. And now I need to turn that off. So I need to turn on at 2. There. Now, as soon as the time goes past 2, this u clicks to 1, and now this is t minus t. I also need to turn on, uh, well, nothing until 5. So now let's turn on. the e to the t function. So there's a way that I can express a split function in, t in a single function using the heavy side step. These u's of t minus a, let's say, are either 0 before the switch point or they're 1 after the switch point. So the whole reason that I would like to express a piecewise function as a single function in a line is then we can do Laplace transforms for it. Before we learned about the heavy side step function, uh, earlier on when we saw a piecewise function, we had to go all the way back to the definition of Laplace transforms in order to transform it. But we're going to be able to 
transform using our chart if I can write a piecewise function as a single in a line function using the heavy side step. So I need to know what's the Laplace transform of I'm going to put square brackets around this. What's the Laplace transform of the heavy side step function switched on at A times some other function? Well, let's go right to the definition then. Now, the definition Here's our Laplace transform definition, right? The integral from 0 to infinity e to the i minus st times the function. Well, let's grab this. OK, from 0 to a, this piece is 0. So the integral is 0. From a to infinity, this u is 1. So it really looks like this. If I think about it as a split function, before a, this is 0. After a, the u is 1. And so this integral here with the 0, I don't even need to write that. It's just 0. My concern then is, what's this, what's this integral evaluate out to be? Well, I'm going to put it down here, and I'm going to I don't need to keep writing the 1 here. Just get rid of it. So it's a matter of just do that, um, do that integration. So I'm going to do a substitution. I'm going to let t equal to, I need another, uh, I'm going to go capital T minus A. plus a. So these this these endpoints here, this a and this infinity, they're little t's. When little t is equal to a, then big T is equal to zero. When little t is equal to infinity, then big T is equal to infinity. And dt dt d little t d big T is equal to 1. So if I do this substitution, I'm doing a, like a plain vanilla substitution that we're on a definite integral that we know how to do. That's going to change the endpoints. So this will be, let's change this first. That'll be capital T. I'm doing my substitution. Everywhere there's a little t, I'm putting a t plus a. Um, Everywhere there's a little t, I'm putting a t plus a. And now i got to switch the endpoints as well. And we chose this substitution so that when little t is a, big T is 0. When little t is infinity, big T is infinity. So there's my plain vanilla, like a u substitution. And it almost looks like a Laplace transform, but let's I just need to take out this e to the minus a s. So if I factor out this e to the minus a s here, which doesn't have any t's in it at all, big or small. So it can go outside. Now this is multiplied by this piece here. And that highlighted piece is basically the Laplace transform of the shifted function. So it's, let's write this down. 
I'm getting this is equal to e to the minus as, e to the minus as, times the Laplace of this shifted function, f of t plus a. All right, we're going to have to do an example to see how this works out. But the idea is then that we take our function that I'm trying to transform, shift it forward a. Uh, well, everywhere there's a t, I put a t plus a. Capital or small, it doesn't matter. I'm integrating it out. So you, since it doesn't make any difference, the t gets integrated out anyway. It's eliminated. I'm going to change this from big back to small just for my rule so that it looks more friendly. The shifting happens then in time. The shifting happens in time forward. I put everywhere there's a T, I put a T plus A. I shift forward, then take the Laplace. When we come out of the Laplace world, it's going to be opposite. We're going to have to shift it back so that everywhere there's a T, we'll put a T minus A. We'll see that in a bit. But they're shifting they're shifting one way to get in and the opposite way to get out, but the shifting always happens in time, so the shifting always happens in the real world. Let's do an example. Here I want to take the Laplace, I want to take the Laplace of Heaviside step function turned on at 1 and multiplied by the function e to the minus 3t. So it's 0, and then e to the minus 3t gets turned on. So if the, I'm matching my rule here, it looks like a is equal to 1. It looks like little f of t, so let's write this down, little f of t is equal to this e to the 3t. If little f of t is equal to e to the 3t, then big F of s is equal to, we have this from our chart, 1 over s minus 3. Oh, but I'm not supposed to transform the e to the 3t. I'm supposed to first shift it. So I need to shift it. Everywhere there's a t, I have to put a t plus 1. Everywhere there's a t, I have to put a t plus 1. Now this is the function that I need to shift. So I'm going to need to clean this up a little bit. This is going to be e to the 3 times e to the 3t. So I am sort of factoring out this e to the 3. It's a constant. So now when I Laplace, when I Laplace, I get that constant times the transform of e to the 3t. All right, so let's, let's finish up our piece here. So it's going to equal to, the heavy side step is going to be the e to the minus as minus 1s times the Laplace of the shifted function. Now I always put them in square brackets because uh, it's going to make it easier when we get out. But here's our Laplace. Alright, that's getting in. Let's, uh, we need to get out of the Laplace world when we have our heavy side step. So let's take a look at this next example. This next example is asking me to draw this, sketch this, but sketch it in time. How do I know it's a function of time? It's the inverse Laplace of some function. So this, some function in the Laplace world. There are S's here. When I take the inverse Laplace, then I'm going to end up with uh, T's. So the first thing I'm going to do then is Let's clean this up a little bit. Let's
I'm going to write this as e to the minus 3s times the square bracketed piece. So this e to the minus s with our example that we went in, that, that came from the heavy side step function. So this e to the minus 3s piece must have come from the heavy side step function where a is equal to where a is equal to 3. So when I untransform this, I know that the front part is going to be I know the front part is going to be the heavy side step function. That's what must have produced this e to the minus 3s. Now, what's the function that gets turned on by this heavy side step function? What gets switched on? Well, this 1 over s cubed, that looks like t squared. Well, okay. If it was t squared, it would have transformed. Well, what's the transform of t squared? 2 over s cubed. So I'm missing a 2 here. So let me put a 2 up front and throw a half for balance. The only reason I'm doing that is so that this, the highlighted part, that would, no, that would un Laplace to be t squared. So I know that un Laplace is to be t squared. So I've still got my, I got my balancing half here. I'm going to put that. It's just a constant. But I don't want to write t squared. I'm, it's t squared shifted. So everywhere there's a t, I put a t minus 3. So this is t squared shifted. An, uh, an easy way to remember this is the argument inside your heavy side step function has to match the argument inside the square bracketed function. Now if I Laplace this, I'll get the e to the minus 3s times 1 over s cubed. You should probably check that on your own. But anyway, now they're asking me to draw this. So what is this supposed to look like? Well, bef for times before 3, this u is equal to 0. So for times before 3, it's just 0. Then for times after 3, that u part is just 1. So the function just ends up being 1 half times t minus um, 3 cubed. So it should just be 0 and then it gets switched on, it's a switched on parabola. So I, I think I, I, I would like to use different rules, slightly different versions, I guess, of the same rule for getting into the Laplace world and out of the Laplace world. To get in, when I'm Laplacing heavy side step function times of another function, e to the minus as times you shift in time and then take the Laplace transform. For getting out, you un-Laplace and then shift in time. Getting in is plus a, getting out is minus a. How can I tell which is which? The argument inside the heavy, inside the heavy side step function matches the argument inside the square bracketed function. There's another video with some more examples that you should probably uh, take a look at after.